In this video, I'm gonna explain how you can create multiple Google Workspace accounts without getting blocked by Google. The reason why I'm making this video is because if you create around five Google Workspace accounts, then eventually Google is gonna to start to block your attempts to create additional accounts. And the reason why they do this is because they wanna prevent spammers from abusing their system and sending millions of low quality emails. So what Google does is after around five accounts, they'll just start to block your attempts. I can understand why they do that, but there are situations where you want to have more than five accounts. If you're someone who believes that you need more than five accounts, then this video is for you. But before I continue this video and before I go into all the details, there's a LinkedIn post that I made, which I recommend that you read before creating your Google Workspace accounts because this LinkedIn post has some information that is quite valuable if you care about your deliverability. So this is the LinkedIn post I'm referring to. You'll see that I just give 10 pieces of advice about how to set up your email accounts for cold email. And if you follow these 10 things, you're gonna have better deliverability long-term and you're gonna be less likely to get blacklisted. So feel free to pause this video and just read these 10 points here if you want to. But back to the general topic of this video, which is how do you set up multiple Google Workspace accounts or at least more than five so that Google doesn't block you. And the first step, there's gonna be a four step process here that I'm gonna share, but the first step is to find people to set up the accounts. Now, you might be thinking that this doesn't sound very scalable or that this just seems like a lot of work. And you might be right to think that, but the thing is, is that the best way to ensure great deliverability long-term is by having real people setting up your Google Workspace accounts. So you don't wanna use resellers. If you use a reseller, they're gonna basically set up your Google Workspace accounts on the same tier network as thousands of other Google Workspace accounts. And it's almost guaranteed that your accounts will get blacklisted by Gmail and Outlook and you're just gonna get a spam. So I just don't recommend using resellers. I mean, some people will disagree with me, that's fine. But the people disagreeing with me are often people who own lead gen agencies who use resellers primarily because doing what I'm gonna describe in this video for dozens of clients is very difficult. But if you're just a regular business doing cold email campaigns for your own business and you don't need to set up thousands of email accounts, then you know you can ignore resellers and do what I'm advising here. But anyways, you wanna find people to set up these Google Workspace accounts so that each person that you find maybe sets up three or four accounts each so that it's not centralized because one of the biggest issues from a deliverability perspective when you're setting up your email accounts or Google Workspace accounts is centralizing everything. If you have everything set up under one person's name or you know the same credit card or same phone number or same whatever, then Google is going to tie all those accounts to one person and then they're probably going to blacklist you automatically. So instead of doing that, you want to decentralize as much as possible. And the best way of doing that is by using multiple real people. So each person that you, that you hire or pay to do this we we'll use their real name, their real credit card number, their real phone number, their email, all that kind of stuff, all different IP addresses. And because they're using the real information, there's no way that Google could ever really know that they're all tied to the same account or same person. So it, it's basically a bulletproof way of doing it. And you might be thinking, well, can I just try to replicate that decentralization myself by using different IPs and you know uh, a service like privacy.com, which gives you basically a, a fake credit card number and all this kind of stuff. And like you can try that. There are people who do try doing that, but supposedly it's still relatively easy for Google to tie all those accounts to the same person, uh, whether that's through the device being used or other things that I'm sure there's ways of doing it. So if you're trying to be really safe long-term, it's best just to use real people so that there is really no way of being tied together. And if you're just a regular business, you know, maybe you're some random software company and you're doing cold outbound for, for your product, you know, you might already have two or three people or four people on your team. Well, you can just ask a few people on your team to set up two or three accounts each. So you don't even necessarily have to hire random people. You could just ask people that are already in your company to do this. And then that's probably the easiest way of doing so. But just, you know, if you're by yourself and you don't have anyone to ask, you can hire some people either on Fiverr or Upwork. You can even try services like Amazon Mechanical Turk. There's no shortage of websites where you can find people to do tasks for you in exchange for payment. But the point is, is whatever strategy you choose to follow, I recommend that you have those people be in the country where your leads are based. So again, this is speculative. I'm not saying that what, that what I'm about to say is 100% fact, but a lot of people speculate that if you set up 
Google Workspace accounts, then if you're targeting people in the US, you're going to have better deliverability compared to if you set up those Google Workspace accounts in the Philippines, for example, because you know a, an easy way for Google to prevent spam emails is by basically blocking emails from IPs or sources that are not even from the country that they're being sent to. So again, that might not be true, but if you're trying to be really safe, it might be, it might be a good idea to follow that advice because it's also... It does make sense when you think about it. So ESPs have been known to block incoming emails from other ESPs or services that are from certain regions of the world that have a high amount of spam. Like, for example, a few years ago, uh, Zoho email accounts were popular in the cold email space, but then Outlook and Gmail as well started basically blocking incoming emails from Zoho accounts because they're being used by a bunch of spammers and the IPs are from India. And the point is, is that it's this is sort of been seen to happen in the past. So if you're just trying to be very careful, make sure the people that you have set up these Google Workspace accounts for you are in the same country as the leads they are contacting. If you're contacting leads in lots of different countries, then probably safe is just to set them up in the US. That'll probably work everywhere. Now, the second part of this process is just to share the tutorial videos. So if you go to Email Chaser University inside your Email Chaser account, you go to part two where it says technical setup. We have these videos here which show you exactly how to set up an email account through Google Workspace the right way. And I recommend that you just send these YouTube videos to whoever you know is setting up these accounts for you. And you just ask them to follow the videos in, the, in this order. Uh, if you don't want to go into email chaser university, you can just go to this article or a blog. And on this article, all those videos that I just showed you in email chaser university are listed. So you'll notice down here, we have the videos embedded in the article. So you could just send, you could just copy the URL of the article and send it to your, your people and they'll do it. Just follow those instructions. Once your, your people have set up the Google Workspace email accounts, the next step is to connect those email accounts to your email chaser account because essentially you just don't want to have one person being tied to all the accounts. So you don't want to, you know, if you set up 30 accounts, you don't want one person logging into all 30 accounts because that's going to tie it all together to one person, which could be a, a big footprint that causes them to get blacklisted. So instead you want all the individual people to log into your email chaser account. So for example, you can you know, invite all those people to your email chaser account or just share the login credentials and then ask them to go to the email accounts page and settings and they can just click the connect your email button and they can then just connect those Google Workspace accounts directly. That will just prevent all those accounts being tied to the same person. And finally, the next or last step is to launch a campaign. So once you've had all those email accounts connected to your email chaser account, you can then go into your account and click the create campaign, create campaign button and you know, name your campaign, upload your leads and launch it. And that's really all there is to it. So anytime you get a response from a lead, that response will appear in your sales serum page. So a notification will appear up here on the top. When you click that notification, it'll open up the lead that responded to you and you can respond to those leads directly from inside your sales serum page. So you don't have to log into all the individual email accounts that you have connected. That's really all you have to do. Uh, one thing I just want to make clear though is I'm not suggesting that every single person that sends cold email campaigns needs to do this. So I'm not saying that every single person should set up 50 email accounts. That's not necessary, especially if you set up evergreen accounts because, sorry, evergreen campaigns. So we have an article in our blog, which I'm going to show you right now, titled How to Create an Evergreen Cold Email Campaign. Without taking too long, in this article, I show you a six-step process which allows you to contact super relevant leads in an evergreen campaign. And if you set up an evergreen campaign, you don't even need to have that many email accounts because the leads that you're contacting are so relevant that you're going to have a very high response rate and you don't need to blast out thousands of emails per day. You can just send a relatively low volume, but still get great results. But if there's a situation where you really want to scale your volume for whatever reason, and you do need to set up dozens of Google Workspace accounts, then obviously the advice in this video is what, you know, this video is made for that situation. So if you want to scale the number of accounts you have, then follow the advice in this video. I'm not saying that what I'm, that this advice is easy to follow. You know, it does require some work, but if you're trying to keep everything as decentralized as possible, then this is the safest way to do it. Some people out there use resellers and they basically have the opinion that they're just gonna burn their accounts immediately and every month or two, they're just gonna set up new accounts. 
maybe that works for them. But the problem with that is that as ESPs get stricter and stricter with cold email, as time goes on, the idea of just setting up brand new accounts on a never ending basis because your old accounts got burned, um, that's going to get more and more difficult in my opinion, because, you know, for example, Gmail and Outlook will start to um, basically increase the time that new accounts need to exist before they start trusting them. So if you're just constantly setting on brand new accounts, those brand new accounts might never even build up a real good reputation to begin with where they even really have good long-term de- deliverability. And in my opinion, it's just not really that great of a situation. I think it's long-term better to treat your email accounts as long-term assets that you set up and you can use them for years and they actually have a high response rate and they go to the primary inbox and you don't have to constantly set up new accounts. I think that's, in my opinion, the best thing to do long-term, but you know, people have different opinions. But if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this about cold email, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hope to see you in the next video.